Hi, welcome back for another Tool Time Tuesday. I'm Melissa Muir. I've received lately a lot of requests about different types of shears in the studio. We're not just talking hand shears, we're talking about bench shears. And in my studio, I have a bench shear and a guillotine shear. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate the difference between the two of them, and perhaps you'll be able to see where one may fit into your studio better than the other. Now the first shear that I have here in my studio is the one that I bought a few years ago and I have absolutely loved it. This is a Peppy Tools 12 inch guillotine shear. There is a measuring stick that will come with your shear and I found that I just did not use it that often and that would enable you to set it so that you are able to cut multiples of the same exact size. But like I said, I didn't really use it that often and it also took up a lot of space so I removed that. The other thing that I've done, you'll see that I've got some blue painter's tape here. And that is because that when you attach this bottom plate that allows your metal to kind of slide off, as I was cutting very, very thin pieces, they would kind of fall down into a little crack there. So I just put a little piece of painter's tape, make it so that everything kind of slides out nicely. Now why is it called a guillotine shear? Well think about the guillotine that the French used to have. And what it does is it comes down in a straight action. The blade is slightly angled so that as it comes down, it shears your metal. Now the nice thing about the guillotine shears is you get nice straight cuts. So the way that I use this is I'll just take my metal, mark it wherever I need it to, line it up inside of this. Now here you'll see this little lever here and what you're not seeing is a little brass plate right here that kind of comes down and it holds everything into place nicely. So what I've done is just kind of clamped it down my metal, bring my shear, bring it forward, open this back up. I'm now able to remove my metal and I have nice clean edges. My metal is still straight for the most part. It didn't really start out straight, it was kind of curved. But it didn't get a great big deep curve like you get with some of the other types of shears. These are very, very expensive. They run probably around $900 to $1,000 at this point. But it's great if you were going to have a lot of large pieces that you need to cut straight pieces on. The reason I purchased this was because I was doing a lot of workshops and a lot of classes and needed to have a lot of blanks cut squares, rectangular, rectangular shapes, things like that. So that's why I made the justification for purchasing this. Now the other type of shear that I have in my studio is a bench shear. It is not throatless. Throatless would be like a Beverly shear. And this is where it doesn't really have this longer section here between the beginning of the blade here and the end of the machine. This one will allow you to cut curves, but not nearly as easily or as well as like a Beverly shear would. This one from Potter USA, uh, is made just slightly differently now. So right here I have a measuring stick or a measuring guide. He no longer includes this because people were just kind of finding that it's in a way. And when I do cut larger pieces of metal, I do remove this and then it allows me to slide my metal back. However, it is kind of nice to have a measuring guide on there. But just take a piece of tape, mark it out, and stick it on your, your shear, and then you'll still have that measuring guide. Now, why is the difference between this versus the guillotine shear? Well, for one, you don't have as big of a throat. This is a six inch shear, whereas my guillotine is 12. However, the guillotines do come in 12, six, and four inches. The other thing that has happened with this one, Kevin Potter has made a plate for this. And this allows you to really use this tool more like you would with the guillotine shear. However, the cutting action is different. You'll notice that as I bring down the blade, it kind of rolls down rather than coming down in a straight action like the guillotine shear does. And that's really your biggest difference there. Now in that action, it's also going to curl your metal. So as you cut away pieces, you're going to end up with more of a curve on your metal than you would with the guillotine. So for instance, this piece I had done, you can see kind of the square that I've cut out after I have already domed this shape. So I needed a way to cut away this metal and I wanted it to have nice straight edges. Now I can do that with a jeweler saw or a hand shear, but I'm not going to have as accurate of results. So that is going to be something. And you can't really get this piece into the guillotine shear because everything is gonna be in the way, especially with this dome that I've already put onto it after forming it in a hydraulic press. Now here's a similar piece where I have gone through, I've already formed it, I've soldered a back piece into it and kind of formed that through some of the openings. And you'll see that I've got this black sharpie around it. And what I've done, and you can barely see it here in the video, but I've actually scored a line, which is the reason for that black marker. So I can go through, score my line, and I can actually see it. Now, I could take a 
jeweler saw or my hand shears and go through and cut this out. But again, that's gonna take a little bit of time. Whereas I can use this shear, cut it out fairly close to that line and then go back with my files and just kind of even things out. So it just kind of depends. It was just an example that I could show you. So let me show you really quickly how I would do this with the bench shear and show you why it won't work with a guillotine. So first, let me show you on this guillotine shear. First of all, remember I told you about that plate that comes down? This acts as a safety support. Well, it's a couple things. It holds your metal down in place as you're cutting, which is really nice so that your metal doesn't kind of pull through as you've got that cutting action going. But it also acts as a safety so you can't get to this blade with your fingers, which is very important for me because I have small children that run around here. But it also makes it so that I can't get my metal in there if it's too tall. So I could take this off, but again, still getting into there with this form shape is going to be difficult. I could try to bring it in on this other side, but the top part of the frame gets in the way. So really with the guillotine shear, it's just not a good way to do this. Not only that, but I want to make some curved cuts rather than just straight. That other shear will give me straight cuts as well, but at least I'm going to be able to curve it around with my piece better than I would with the guillotine. Now, with this shear that I have here, the bent shear, I actually can pull my metal into here and I can manipulate it just like this because I'm able to get right up next to that blade. Now, that's also a safety issue that you want to be aware of. Again, I have small children in my home and that's where my studio is. So there are a couple different things that you can do. My kids know not to even come near this, but that's still not always foolproof. So one of the things that um, I have done in the past is take a block of wood and just stick it in here and that way they cannot pull it shut or anything like that. But let's talk a little bit about how to get this in here. So again, the nice thing is, is that I'm able to get right into this. I could come this way, but again, I will run into the top of this frame. So I can just bring this in here and the table is kind of nice because it allows me to hold this. But if ever I want to just hold a piece, the table is removable. Then you just remove these two screws right here, and you can pull that off, and then you'll have a little closer access to holding your pieces. But because the table's here, I can support it, keep my hands clear of this blade even. So what I would do is just come in, and I might make a few choppy rough cuts first, and then I can come back in and get into these tapers just a little bit better. Okay. So again, this is a really rough cut at this point, but I'm getting pretty close to my, my line that I have scored. And really, it's not going to take that much to come back into this, file it out, and then proceed with my piece. One of my favorite things that I can do with this shear is partial cuts. So with a guillotine, I pretty much have to take my piece and cut an entire strip. It is possible to do a partial cut, but not easily. However, with this shear, it is much easier. So here you can see I've kind of marked just a corner. And what I'm going to do is just kind of line it up. I like to bring the blade down, but not cut yet, just so that I can kind of see to make certain that I'm going to be cutting where I want to. And I'm going to just bring this in, and I can see where it stops. And again, you can see that we have this bending action that's happening with this shear. So in this case, I want that a little bit straighter. I'll just push it back with my fingers. Lay it back in here once again, bring it down, test where my cut is going to be, and bring that down, and I didn't quite get them to meet up, but there is my partial cut. So I don't have to cut the entire sheet of metal. Now in this case, I did go a little bit further here than I intended to, so I've got a slight, slightly longer cut, but you kind of get the idea of what's possible with this. Now, another difference between the two shears is that this bent shear is actually made for more industrial uses. So you can actually cut steel up to about 1 8 inch, which is approximately 10 gauge. Whereas the guillotine shear should be used for things like gold, silver, copper, and you can do up to about 16 gauge in that.